Hi, Julia Usher Recipes for a Sweet Life. As I promised in my recent chocolate dessert on pedestal that I made for Valentine's Day, I was going to come back and do a separate video to give you more details about how to make the modeling chocolate rose and leaves that top off these beautiful desserts. In a previous ribbon making video, I discussed how to make the little bow loop, so I'll refer you off to that. But I've never really addressed the making of this particular more realistic looking rose or the leaves, so I thought I'd give you an extra little special tidbit for Valentine's Day. So let's talk about what we'll need for each of these items. For the rose, it's been made with pink modeling chocolate with a light dusting of pearl luster spray. So for it, you need the modeling chocolate. I refer you off to my video for how to make that. You'll also need nothing really complicated. I use a plastic baggie that I've split in half along the seams. This will be the area in which I shape the petals, and the plastic bag just keeps them from sticking to my work surface. I use a ball tool, a fondant shaping tool with a large ball end. If you don't have this, no worries. I've found that the end of a light bulb, the round end of the light bulb, works equally well, in fact, somewhat better. And then the last thing you'll need for the rose is the luster spray to top it off once we've got it all shaped. For the leaves, they're even simpler. They require less hand modeling. They're gonna use a green modeling chocolate. So to get that vein structure, I'm working with really simple plunger cutters. There are many different brands of these. This is a PME brand. It actually comes in a graduated set of three. I've just got two of the sizes here. It cuts and both embosses the vein structure into the leaf at the same time. And then to give it that sheen, and to accentuate the vein structure, this is completely optional, of course, as is the luster spray on the rose. I'm going to use a little brown luster dust, dust it on with a dry, soft brush at the very end. I'm ready to start the rose making process. So I've got my split baggie up the seams. This is gonna be the receiving area for petals. And to make each petal, I basically start by creating a little ball of modeling chocolate. The smaller the ball, the smaller the rose. I'm gonna make a pretty tiny rose this time, maybe something closer to this size or in between these two. So I think these quarter inch balls are probably about the right size for that. If I were to do a half inch ball, I'd end up with something bigger like that rose that I made earlier. And I'm just shaping them roughly into little rounds. You could be more precise about it, but at the end of the day, these petals are gonna get smushed a little bit and they're all gonna be a little bit different and a little bit of irregularity won't, won't matter. Now you can also work with other mediums when making roses using this exact same method, such as fondant or gum paste. And there are pros and cons of each medium. Gum paste and fondant will dry much more quickly and solidly hard. Uh, they will, they're not as sticky as modeling chocolate, so they'll allow you to get a more delicate and much more realistic looking rose than I'm going to be able to get with modeling chocolate. But they do dry really, really hard. So they're, though theoretically edible, all made of sugar, they're not really palatable garnishes. You would probably break a tooth if you bit into one. Whereas with modeling chocolate, it will set up a little more firm, but as you handle it or put it in your mouth, the, the heat from your mouth would quickly warm it up to Tootsie Roll consistency and it's quite palatable and quite delicious. The downside is it's sticky. You can see it's already sticking to my hands. So I can't make as thin a petal with it without it breaking or smooshing or sticking to the plastic. So they'll look a little bit less delicate, that's all. But I still think we can get something quite lovely because you can see the examples in front of you that were all made with modeling chocolate. This is also a relatively quick process. Some people labor over roses and make them look absolutely realistic, and I really admire those artists. But here I'm trying to do something relatively quick that can be a garnish for a dessert that actually is elaborate in and of itself, so I didn't want to add a lot of decorating time in the rose element. So the next step after making them into balls was just roughly flattening them with the palm of my hand, as you saw. And now I'm taking my ball balling tool, if you don't have this, the round end of a light bulb will work too. And I'm just smushing out, thinning, if you will, the upper half of each petal, leaving the bottom half relatively thick as something to grab onto and hold. And I don't want it too thin because as I said, it will stick to the plastic if it gets too thin. 
unlike fondant, which is less prone to sticking. Let's see what that does. Got a little bit of sticking going on. Hopefully these will come off without tearing the thin end of the petal, but we'll see. Now my first step is to create the center core of the rose, and I do that, of course, I want the thin end facing up just by twisting this into a little cone, if you will. So it looks something like that head on. You can see how sticky it's getting, so I'd like to have powdered sugar nearby to keep it from getting too tacky here. Sometimes I'll even dust these balls with a little bit of powdered sugar before I thin them so they're less likely to stick. They're coming off okay today. Then I start a next row of petals. I'd like to have them up above the bud at least a little bit so the bud doesn't end up sticking out too much in the end. And I'm going to do about three around the center and then we'll come back and do a second row of about five or six to complete the rows. There was a little bit of tearing on this end when I pulled it off because the chocolate stuck, but I think some of that tearing actually makes the rose look a little more natural, so I'm not going to worry about that. If I get too much, I might do something about it. So I've got my three petals kind of overlapping the center, and at this point I want to turn down a few edges just so it looks a little more natural. Maybe just, just that one there and leave that little tear on the other. And that would make a nice bud right there if you just wanted to stop there at the core in the first row of three petals. But we're going to move on and make a fully formed rose. Again, I'm putting a little more powdered sugar here because it's getting soft on me. Picking up my next petal. And I like to stagger the petals. So I'm putting this one so it overlaps the intersection point of the other, if you will and then overlap them as I go, not turning them down until I get at least a few of them up. Yes, I think that looks good. And I'm not going to turn that one down too much because it's got some natural kind of tear in it that looks pretty good. So there's my fully formed rose. I'm going to let that set that aside to solidify a little bit, get my warm hands off of it, and then we'll be ready to spray it. The next step is to give this a little luster, purely optional, but I like the effect it has of heightening some of the detailed turndowns and things on the petals. You can hold it in the line of spray, but more often I like to stick it down so my, my hands are not getting in the line of spray. These are ones that are already sprayed. You can see the little sheen on the edge of the petals, which is kind of nice in the light. I just think that looks a little more animated and lifelike than the other roses. One word on these roses, you can see it didn't take me more than a minute or so to make one, even with this relatively sticky modeling chocolate. So in my day, when I had my bakery and was making a lot of wedding cakes, I could easily make 60 to 100 of these in an hour, which is, which is relatively quick for decorations for a wedding cake. If you want something even quicker, go look at my ribbon tutorial, the ribbon making tutorial, because I show how to make a simple ribbon rose there, which is just basically a twirling up of a ribbon creates a more whimsical rose, but it's even faster. And this is going to get a light spray because I don't want it sprayed all the way into the recesses. I just want to get the upper edges of the petal. I think that looks really nice. Okay, we're on to making the leaves. These are super duper easy. I'm going to be rolling them as thin as I possibly can using my pasta machine, which is what I typically use for rolling fondant ribbons. The key thing in working with modeling chocolate versus fondant when working with the pasta machine is to make sure these roller blades are completely clean before you start. You can see in me rotating this, I've got some gunk here from a previous roll. I want to get that all off because modeling chocolate's even more sticky than fondant, so if there's anything on the roller blades, it's going to cling to it, and you're going to get a really rough looking roll. So that being done, I've got my modeling chocolate. It's kind of a dull green. I softened some green with a little bit of brown so it looked nice and soft and romantic for Valentine's Day. Also, unlike fondant, I tend to dust my work surface a little bit more with powdered sugar. Some people use cornstarch. I use powdered sugar because it's sugar and sugar. I feel it's more compatible and it works just as well. I'm going to start it on my number one setting. And I'm going to try to roll these to number four to get a really delicate looking leaf. So here I have a nice thin strip of modeling chocolate. 
I like the delicacy of it, but you want to make sure it's not so thin that when you press down on the embosser, you don't get any embossing in it. That's quite possible. So we'll see if that's the case here. I did one large leaf earlier and it looks to be fine, but let's give it a shot. My motion is to press down first without hitting the plunger. The plunger is what's going to emboss the dough, make, making sure it disengages. And then I push down pretty hard on the plunger a few times. And then in the process of doing that, it basically plunges the piece out of the cutter as well. And you can see it's got nice embossing on it. Let's do a couple more. And then I, then I do give them, so cutting, plunging. That one didn't plunge out, but with a few more pushes it will. That's the back side. Let's look at the flip side. So it's got a nice texture on it. So that's the basic process. You can do them in a wide variety of sizes. I've just got two of the three cutters here. And then I do like to give them a little lift typically. I certainly did for this project so they're not all lying flat because if you just leave them like this, they'll look flat and be not so easy to arrange. So to do that, I simply just give them a little pinch at the bottom. Sometimes I dry them like that. Sometimes I'll drape them over the edge of my cookie sheet that I'm working on or my cutting board to give them a little curl at the end of the leaf. Sometimes I'll fully fold them in to make a more slender leaf, maybe even bend them back. So there are lots of different ways you can shape them. I do like to dry them though before I accentuate them with petal dust because I think the petal dust goes down more evenly when the dough isn't tacky and soft and it accentuates the veins a little more neatly. But we're going to go ahead and dust it on these, these uh, softer leaves and see what it does in comparison. Once again, the dusting is completely optional but I like how it heightens the vein structure and gives a little sparkle. And I'm just dumping a little into the cap because I don't want to contaminate what's the bulk that's in the container using a soft, dry brush. If it, the brush is hard and brittle, it can scratch, scratch the surface of your modeling chocolate or whatever you're dusting it onto. So I want to get a little bit on there, shake the excess off, and then just lightly dust. And it might go down a little bit more streaky on these damp pieces, but it appears to be going down quite nicely. Oftentimes I will let them dry. The, the other reason for letting them dry is they're just, I spent this time shaping them and they're going to unshape a little bit as I dust them and they won't do that if they're a little more rigid. So that completes my mini extra little Valentine's Day tutorial on how to make modeling chocolate roses and leaves. Of course you can make them using the same method with other mediums like fondant and gum paste. I use them to deck out this beautiful little all chocolate dessert made especially for Valentine's Day. If you haven't seen that video, please do hop on over and check it out. It's just a wonderful treat, special treat for a loved one. If you want to do something else, that's fine too. These garnishes are ultimately adaptable. You can make them very, very tiny and put them on a small cookies. You can scale them up and put them on lavish wedding cakes. So it's completely your call. Have a happy Valentine's Day and live sweetly.